Um, welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining into this webinar um, from the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team around uh, machine learning. Um, this is going to be a quite technical webinar. We will start with a little bit of introduction and then also dive into, into code and um, suggest um, from development seat is joining um, with me. Um, on this introduction, and um, I'm Felix, by the way, I'm the technical project manager for um, the tasking manager in HOT, and this is one of the software pieces where we have been most um, experimenting around machine learning and um, how we can improve and assist the mappers um, with, um, with their work and to focus on the things that they are best at. Um, just to um, recap quickly, the Tasking Manager is a tool that you most probably already know that we use for coordinating of volunteers um, and also organizations and groups can, can um, organize themselves um, to map an open street map and to make sure that they're not mapping on the same area and, um, and, yeah, and do quality control and stuff like that. Um, this is widely used within the humanitarian world, but also um, companies or local open street map communities are using it. It's free and open source software, like everything that we are going to present today. And um, everybody is free to test it, install it, learn from it, contribute to it, and so on. Um, we have been doing um, over the last month um, quite some work on experimenting with machine learning and we, I think we can say we have two basic approaches here. One is that we want to unite the efforts on machine learning integration in OpenStreetMap and this is the webinar about today. So we are going to talk about the ML enabler that um, will you will see in a minute that will allow you to um, to propose machine learning uh, models to it. And on the other side, it will offer a consistent way of consuming them um, by different programs. And um, this is also the connection with the tasking manager because this is the first application that it's actually using. Um, we are also experimenting around certain um, ways of how machine learning can assist the mappers and we are doing this on a separate instance of the tasking manager which we call the machine learning playground and it's um, available with this link tasks hyphen assisted.org the two main approaches that we are currently testing there one is that we use sm predictions for machine learning um, models about build up areas, buildings, but it could also be done with other things like roads or, and so forth. This that means that we use machine learning to look at the satellite imagery. And based on that, we try to, um, we compare it with OpenStreetMap data. And based on that, with this gap analysis, we can estimate how complex a certain task would be. Um, and based on that, we can give suggestions on split this task, use smaller tasks, or um, just like make up good projects that give suitable tasks to mappers. And we can also, knowing about or as, knowing about an estimation of this um, complexity of each like square and task, we can also give like the harder things to experienced mappers and the easier, um, easier squares, easier tasks to beginner mappers. So we have like a way of also providing like the best um, suitable tasks to mappers that they can do the best job um, they are capable of in this moment. The other option is to actually use the predicted geometries, in this case roads, um, and, um, and bring this closer to the mapper. In this case, it's um, the sets work that has been done by Facebook and it is integrated also into this machine learning playground. And people there can like step by step pull in small portions of geometries, like it has been done before with imports of, of government data or others, and then can decide one by one whether this is good, whether it needs some fixing, whether it needs to be adjusted, or whether it's just okay 
and um, and then later on um, save it. So what is then the ML enabler? So the, 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 the um, situation we were in is that we saw there's so many things going on with machine learning models right now and um, and we somehow want to try them, right? We don't want to like keep them only in the theory. We really wanted to get them into, into the software, which in our case was the tasking manager. So um, we also realized that there, there are many. Um, we are working currently with two, three, um, and um, and there are many more, and usually they are like they 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 are implemented for one purpose and they're consumed in one application for this purpose, and then that's it. So seeing that the, those are going to be more, and I expect those to be more in the future too, um, we said, hey, let's let's try to find something to make this consistent, right? Um, and for this, we um, we envisioned um, this piece of software, which is the ML enabler, which is a middle piece a clue between ML models and um, and consuming applications, especially applications within the OSM ecosystem or generally mapping applications. And they can only um, implement, or they only have to implement one connection, one API connection to the ML enabler, but then should be able to consume a lot of different um, machine learning models. So they don't have to implement um, a specific um, integration for each of the ML models, but with one, they get like the access to for all of them, all of them that are integrated with the ML and ML enabler. On the other side, it's the same, right? We, you can, you can, if you have a machine learning model, you can only, you can just integrate it into the machine learning ML enabler, and then it is will be available for all the applications that are consuming this API. So this is a way of making it consistent. And I think this is also a way that we can make sure that machine learning models um, are quicker usable. And on the other side, um, applications that want to use them um, and want to experiment with them, they can actually, um, yeah, with, by one implementation, you get several. Uh, at this current stage, there are two um, ML models integrated, which is um, one open source um, machine learning model called Looking Glass that has been developed um, in collaboration with the with development seed. Um, so chat will um, most likely go mainly into this as the, as the showcase. And on the other side, um, we are consuming one um, data source from machine learning models, obtained from machine learning models, which is from Microsoft and is available and um, also a little bit known as the build Microsoft Buildings uh, building footprints, um, which has been released um, some time ago already for the U.S. and um, and we are currently collaborating on on using this also in um, in countries and areas where um, it is needed for humanitarian purposes. This um, presentation, for sure, we will share with you. So this is the last slide that gives you all the links that you will need. Um, the first one, um, the blog post where you can, or the, the project where we are working on hot OSM um, around AI-assisted and machine learning-assisted humanitarian mapping. There you get like all the news that you um, might want to read about it, what we are doing. Um, and like, for example, the second link here, which is the specific introduction to the ML enabler we are talking about today. Um, then, of course, the um, repositories and documentation to the ML enabler, which, which is crucial because um, we will, we will, um, yeah, because you can you can use this. This is open source, and we really want you to get your hands into that. Um, then um, on the OSM wiki, we are collecting information around machine learning, and I think this is really an invitation for you to um, to add your work if you're doing around that, so we are aware of it, so it's not too scattered. And of course, like as we are trying to integrate more models and more software through the ML enabler, um, this is the starting point to make us all aware what is going on what works out, what doesn't work out. Um, also being transparent with OpenStreetMap, um, there have been 
as you most probably know, there has been also always hesitations around um, whether machine learning, where's the, the line, the red line of using machine learning in OpenStreetMap. And, um, and I personally think that the more we are transparent about it and we are talking about it, the more we can figure out what is, what is um, the way OSM wants to deal with machine learning. Um, as a discussion platform, we opened up also a, a mailing list around machine learning, um, which is machine-learning at OSM, uh, at OpenStreetMap.org. I don't think the activation works here. Um, so you're most welcome also to, um, to subscribe to this one, to be updated, um, to take part in the discussion. Um, so, so please join, that would be great. Um, that's my introduction from my side, and I would like to hand over to Sajat to go into the deep um, dives of the ML enabler. Hey everybody, uh, Felix, can you all hear me okay? I think now you have it. Great. Um, awesome. Thanks, Felix, for the introduction. I think you covered pretty much uh, everything that I wanted to say. So I'll try to keep it short, but we can uh, spend some time. Maybe, I don't know how you guys do this. Do you guys take questions in chat or um, either way? But I'm also around later if you guys want to chat specific, uh, if you have specific questions. I will try to share my screen. Um, and uh, cool. So, yeah, so like Felix said, we've been working on this for a few weeks. Um, and uh, it, the background is that the, this is a really exciting time for machine learning implementations in OpenStreetMap. There are a lot of people actively um, involved in creating new models and building algorithms. There are a lot of people uh, pack packaging those up into APIs and uh, um, making them available for tools like Task Manager. Um, and there's a lot of work going on on the other side um, within IT and within Task Manager to allow mappers to consume all this. Um, so the biggest thing that's kind of missing is um, there's very the coordination between all of these organizations and um, stakeholders is, is quite challenging and that's um, that's not because of the nature of these organizations that's mostly because of the different ways that these people work and also because these projects have their own sort of lifetimes um, and they also have sort of internal goals and targets that each of these people want to achieve. So um, ML Enabler in a way is sort of uh, trying to help facilitate this problem of negotiating um, these different aspects of different models and you know different individuals and organizations publishing them. Um, and different tools that are able to consume them and allowing mappers to be a bit more efficient. Um, so there are a lot of participants in this process. Um, there's, there's the organization who um, has the model, have machine learning engineers working on them. Then, um, then there are like the tool builders within HOT or volunteers who are uh, able to integrate those models into uh, into ML enabler, and then and then finally um, the project managers of um, within Task Manager can make use of this information and then surface them to, to the mapper. So that's kind of the entire workflow. Um, so in the end, I think we we built this um, thinking that we can try to talk to a lot more organizations out there building models and bring them all together under this one umbrella. Um, so we want to call that umbrella as the registry of models within sort of who are willing to contribute data to OpenStreetMap and you guys have seen some of the exciting work people are doing in this space. Um, and it also, 
once you have everybody under this umbrella, it's easy for us to build sort of standard API methods that can be, be that can then be used by task manager or ID in a consistent way. So ID or task manager is not um, is not rewriting or building new features to integrate with the new model that came out um, just yesterday or last week. Um, but there would be a standard fashion how these tools can in, in, interact with with model model data. Um, <clears throat> so um, I'll kind of like go through some of the specifics. Um, I'm sorry if this is sort of very technical or not technical for some people, but I'll try to like do a mix of both. Um, and I'll I'll invite all of you guys to take a look at. Um, take a look at the code, give it a spin. Um, we've taken some time to actually write the tests properly so they kind of are um, a good way into how someone would use these these APIs and tools. Um, so they, they end up being good examples as well. Um, so, so, so ML Enabler kind of sits in the middle. Um, it takes the models, the data from models, and then sends it down to, to mappers through different tools. Um, there are sort of different design decisions that we've had to make um, on how do you how would you store these prediction data? What kind of prediction data sets do you want to store? Um, how do we want to allow tools like Task Manager to query these these data sets? What about versioning this data? What about um, allowing people to fetch historical prediction data? Um, what about allowing people to fetch um, geometries, what about being able to do aggregations and analysis? So we've tried to address a lot of these questions um, in a limited amount of time. So I would say we've gotten some of it right, and I think some of it still needs a lot of testing for us to say whether this is the right approach or not. Um, so for a start, I think we'll, uh, let's see. So I think we should sort of like take one example um, and talk through the entire workflow. So let's pick um, looking glass. So looking glass is um, a model that we built a development seed. Um, it's actually pretty straightforward. What it does is it takes a single satellite image dial, uh, which is uh, which is two fifty six by two fifty six at zoom eighteen, um, and it will create a um, it will produce this mask that's, that's then used to calculate the total amount of um, building area in square kilometers, square meters in that particular tile. So, it, so you can imagine that it takes this this raster tile, and then you, in the end, you are able to calculate the float value of the total amount of area that's covered uh, by buildings in that tile. Um, so a lot of we've used a considerable amount of training data set from OpenStreetMap um, to uh, identify objects, classify them, and then uh, classify them, object, uh, identify them, and then um, get the area uh, per pixel. So that's that's what Looking Glass does. So um, if you look at it from the task manager perspective, um, if you are a mapper. You want to open your open the task, open the project that you're interested in mapping, and it would be really useful for you to see what tasks uh, in that project are less mapped or needs more mapping because there's building area that's not um, that, that's not um, matching with what the what the model is predicting. Um, so to get to that point, we need to store all these predictions for a particular bounding box. Now imagine that bounding box is the bounding box of your um, of your task area, right? Um, so we need to get these predictions into a central location so a task manager can query. So that's that's what the API does. Um, API kind of holds on to this um, all this information per model. And these things are called prediction tiles. So we we take each of the each of the tiles that are predicted, and I'll explain how these tiles are defined. They're slightly different from um, satellite imagery tiles because these are defined as uh, code keys, so that we can allow for better identification. Now, um, there's a need. So we we need some sort of a glue to 
take the to allow uh, people to query the the, the model, the, the, the prediction data, and then send that to the API. Um, and that's where the ML enabler fly comes in. So it's set up command line utilities that allows anybody to integrate a new predictor. And now in this case, the predictor is a uh, looking glass. So we've kind of defined the predictor quite arbitrary and quite broad. So any API that you can query for um, map data that you want to make use of in OpenStreetMap can be a predictor. So in this case, Looking Glass is a predictor for which you can send a bounding box and that will get all the satellite image tiles in that bounding box, give you back a float of all the, the building area in each of those tiles. Um, on the other hand, for the Microsoft Building API, that essentially takes the bounding box and then will give you a GeoJSON of all the buildings building footprint in that bounding box. So let's kind of take a look at looking glass and see um, how that works, right? Uh, that's pretty cool. So um, you can see, so we've kind of like abstracted out a lot of things. So it's easy for new people to, um, people to implement new models and new predictors. Um, in this case, so the, the command actually accepts, uh, um, so to, to, to fetch predictions from a particular uh, predictor, you would run a command like this. So you could run fetch prediction, the name of the, uh, name of the predictor, and this essentially comes from, um, the predictions will be defined here, and the name of the predictors are over here. So you can fetch predictions from one of these predictors, um, and what you need to supply is a bounding box, an endpoint. So this is where you define where you're running the looking glass Docker container, for instance. So we've packaged looking glass uh, into a Docker container with the basic API, which uses a TensorFlow uh, schematic. Um, and that will that API will accept a bounding box um, and uh, a Mapbox token, a tile URL, um, which is right now by default map box satellite, a zoom level, which um, looking glass sort of wants that we zoom 18, and then a bunch of output files to store the prediction as well as any errors of uh, any errors that happen. Um, so let's look at what looking glass does with all the predictor does with all this data. Um, what it does is it takes the it takes the bounding box and Kind of makes makes requests to uh, makes requests to the the API per tile. So it kind of calculates all the tiles, and then it cal it, it sends requests to uh, predict each each cell imagery tile. Um, gets back um, gets back the payload, and then creates this sort of little sort of object which um, has a quad key which is the same the salad with the same tile but uh, in a quad key format so we can index them later and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, any uh, if it was an error, what kind of error, what's the image? Um, and if it was successful it will store the quad key, the centroid of the, the tile and the predictions which will be the data that comes back from from the model. Um, so I suggest can you can yes. you um, um, increase the size of the um, font on your screen, please? Yes, I will. Sorry. It's better. So let's look at uh, let's look at the uh, let's look at the data that comes back from uh, the looking glass. Uh, Looking glass API, right? So it essentially gives you something like this. So if you send it a bounding box, um, for that bounding box, it will come back with um, several predictions per tile. So these are smaller zoom 18 tiles within this bounding box. So you can see these are the uh, building area per square meter um, for each of these tiles. 
Um, so you can see the pod key, this is in Zoom 18, and this is where we store to, uh, this is where we used to store in the API. The, the second thing that the, uh, the command line utility allows is this step called the, the aggregate types. Um, called, the, called the aggregator. Now, I think we're kind of debating whether we should call this the aggregator or the augmenter because I think it does both. So aggregator in the sense that looking glass in this example predicts a zoom 18. Now zoom 18 is a very granular tile size that's uh, and that may be too granular for tools like Task Manager to consume. So you can imagine that it's at the building level or at a particular, um, at a much uh, smaller scale, a much larger resolution um, at a first street level, right? So you want to be able to aggregate this so that Task Manager can efficiently query this and surface them uh, on the map, so to the mapper. Um, so the aggregate predictions command kind of defines what sort of aggregations um, we want to do. So in this case, we're asking ML enabler to aggregate the predictions from looking glass at zoom 15. So the predictions were initially at 18. Now we're choosing to aggregate them at 15. So it's faster to fetch and you know, it's actually much nicer to have that aggregated at 15. Um, I'll talk about the overpass URL in a second. Um, and the and the input file is essentially what the prediction uh, came, the, the output of the search predictions command. Um, and what this does is it takes each of the, um, each of these, each of these uh, quad keys, each of these tiles, and bubbles them up. So each of these are zoom 18, and we'll bubble them up into zoom 15 tiles and aggregate the prediction value. Um, so you can see what happens here. So in this case, uh, well, this test is running for Zoom, Zoom 14. So um, in this case, you can see there are very few number of tiles compared to the actual prediction that we got from looking glass. That's because we uh, aggregated them at Zoom 14. Um, you will also notice that there's an additional property called person building area. Um, and this, is why we also call that this step can also do sort of an augmentation. So now let's kind of go back to the code for a um, quick look. So the looking glass aggregator does two things. So it, it aggregates, um, and for each of those aggregated quad key, each of those aggregated tile, it also fetches the OSAM building area from overpass. Um, <laughs> Now, this is the use case for us at Task Manager is to, um, to allow the mapper to immediately see what areas on the map are less mapped or need more mapping work, right? Um, so for this, we need to compare with existing data at OpenStreetMap. So for now, um, the aggregator will use the will use overpass to get that building area. Um, the client has a utility that that fetches from, from overpass. And I think it would make sense to also implement some other, few other cases, a few other tools that would fetch data, like you could use our some QI tiles and tile reviews, um, and, uh, and a few other mechanisms of uh, fetching um, data from OSM that's not overpass because overpass tends to be slightly underlying. Um, so, so that's kind of what the aggregator does. So once once you have the uh, the aggregated and augmented data, which kind of looks like this, um, so it has the quad key, it has the central order of the quad key, and it has this predictions object with the prediction that came from the model and the um, building area for that tile in in OSI. Um The last step. Uh, in the workflow is to push this to the OSA, uh, to the uh, to the ML enabler API, which is pretty straightforward. You run the command and pull predictions, and um, give it the payload JSON, which is the output of the aggregate prediction step. Or if you if you want to completely ignore the aggregate and augmentation step, you can use this the output directly from fetch predictions over here. 
and the URL where um, where the the ML enabler API is hosted. Um, so there are a few things you can do. So, so I, I encourage everybody to go take a look at the ML enabler fly. Um, everything that I've been talking now is all very well documented. There are also lots of examples, um, and you can kind of directly copy paste some of these things. Um, the uh, what else? So yeah, so so the ML enabler API um, kind of defines a model, a prediction, and prediction types. Um, so these are what defines. This is sort of like the data structure that we use uh, in the database, right? So a model is essentially any machine learning model or any model that has some amount of metadata. Um, and it has an API associated to it. Um, we also kind of optionally store the Docker Hub URL in case in the future we want to spin up our own model containers. Um, the a prediction is essentially a, a, a run of the model. So when you ask the model to make predictions for a particular bounding box, that's, uh, that run is called prediction. Now, the reason why the prediction and prediction files are sort of like stored separately is because we want to account for multiple versions of the model. Um, so when we started our building looking glass, it was very good at predicting buildings um, in certain parts of the US. And now it can start doing, um, it, can st it can predict building area in other parts of the world also with a reliable accuracy. Um, so that was another version of the model, and this is sort of like a very, um, it's a very common thing. So people will start building a model with minimum, with, with that works very well in one part of the world, and then eventually, you know, add more training data, tune the parameters and things like that to get it to work for a larger um, part, part of the world. Um, so we want to account for these different versions so people can choose what's the best version for the geography that they are interested in. Um, lastly, the prediction tiles are what we saw earlier, um, which is per quad key with a payload of um, floats that come from um, that come from the uh, the model and the, the predictor and the aggregator. So these things are stored um, in a PostgreSQL database and the the tiles are indexed using quad key. So this is we can easily search for the quad key index and aggregate the aggregate the data as required. And we we'll kind of see um, how this happens. So on the on so, so when we now talk about the task manager side and how someone would use this API, there are a few ways to do it. So first, um, what you want to do is to like see all the models that are available. So you can imagine that there will be a drop-down with a task manager during the project creation phase where you can see all the models that are available, right? Um, second, once you choose a model, you can get all the predictions, um, all the runs of the model within that binding box. So this, you can decide, you know, uh, what version of the model do you want to pick or, um, um, what kind of accuracy you want to see based on the metadata that's stored and so on and so forth. Um, and finally, you can get the, the predicted tiles from the from that model stored in the API, in the ML enabler API um, for, for that same body box. You, so here the, the catch is we're also supplying the sort of zoom um, query parameter, right? Now this is to, largely to sort of enable us to be performant in the future, but also um, allow for smaller level of aggregations as needed. Um, so this kind of serves two use cases. So one, um, imagine the project manager want to quickly decide what's the, what's the priority area. So you could imagine that task manager can send a bigger um, it can set a bounding box, but aggregate it at a higher zoom level. So it can say like, oh, look, this is my AOI, but tell me roughly um, 
at, at the Zoom 12 or 13 level, so I can decide what area uh, area what areas are higher priority. Um, now, if I want to uh, if I want to now start assigning um, task squares for those areas, I want if I want to be able to decide the size of the task square, then I can fetch the uh, the predictions at a much lower zoom level. So I can say, oh look, now I'm uh, I would now that I know my priority area, I would like to decide what the the size of the square should be. So give me uh, the most granular possible um, prediction data so I can do that do that arithmetic. Um, lastly, the task manager or any other tool can also send a geojson feature collection so this you can imagine that if you have already if you already have a project that has a geojson it has all the squares but you only want to fetch the data per square you don't want to do any any aggregation you know you're not interested in finding the priority areas and things like that so you would hit the api with the geojson with all the uh, with all the all the squares as polygons, and the API will give you back. Uh, uh, API will give you back the same GeoJSON that then can directly go into Task Manager. Um, we'll look at some of these through tests. Um, so in this case, uh, this is how the tiles look like. So it would kind of give you the prediction ID, and for each of those predictions, it would give you the same payload that we saw previously at the, the command line interface, except that this would be aggregated at the at the level that's um, that you had, uh, that you um, expect. Um, and similar for the JSON, this so the JSON kind of looks like the task manager uh, project JSON, right? So it has all these polygons. Um, and when you come, when you send this, the payload you get back is also a JSON, but it has this like additional um, property uh, in, per feature, which they can then be used to visualize or um, surface this information on the um, on task manager. Um, I'll stop here for a second and see if anybody has any specific questions before we kind of talk about what's next. Cool. Um, so, so the last part I wanted to cover is where do we uh, go from here? So I know that um, HOT is uh, in trying to integrate this already with Task Manager, so you will see um, some of this work immediately useful um, uh, in the Task Manager ML playground. Um, and we will also really appreciate if you have a model that you want to try integrating, um, just, you know, Send us send us a note or open a ticket, and then we can take that conversation forward. A um, couple of things that we're trying to do um, in the near future, um, and there are a couple of directions that we want to take this project to, and we also want some feedback. One is um, storing geometries, and I think this largely depends on the success of the of the integration with Task Manager. Um, I think. What we, there are several ways to do this. Um, the biggest use case uh, for this is if you have a mapper who clicked on a particular task, task square in Task Manager, and they have now decided to start, when they start, they've now decided to start mapping. At that point, they want to go to ID or JAWSM and already fetch the geometries predicted by the model at that point at that stage. So they can either trace over or they can um, add those features as needed that that involves a lot more conflation and things like that. So we'll get to that later. But you know that's 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 kind of the goal which is and the first step would be to store these geometries um, at, at a place. Um, the two ways to do it I think um, we're we're kind of keeping this around. So one is 
um, to expect the, the command line utility or the model publishers to store the geometry that the vector tile somewhere, um, um, somewhere perhaps AWS S3 or something, and then allow the API, the demo name the API to fetch those and send that down to the editor when required. Um, the second, but I think also most interesting, is to store the geometries within the ML enabler API. Um, so we we have a bit more control over how we want to send, what we want to send, and things like that. Um, the other thing we want to do is to implement a job management system. Um, this so if you, I'm sure you've noticed now. So the workflow currently, um, the part where you ask the results from the model and aggregate them is largely manual, which is why we built the, the command line utility. So you would run that, either you would run that as part of a script that would spin up a model container and then fetch all the data and send it back to the API, or you would do it by yourself, by hand. Um, the kind of future that we imagine is that task manager could list all the available models and in case the given the required model box has no data within the ML enabler API, task manager can request the ML enabler to, you know, spin up the model container, run the job, get the data, and then send it back to um, task manager. So you can imagine there are a lot of like asynchronous operations here. Or we want to build a proper job management system around this. Um, for that, we would make assumptions like the model needs to be stored um, as, a, as, a, as a Docker um, image on Docker Hub or any publicly accessible uh, Docker, Docker-based repository. Um, and you know it needs to have a specific style of API and so on and so forth. Um, what are the other things? So, um, we've also talked about sort of like how um, we want to see these geometries going forward immediately in, in ID or, or JAWSM. And I think one of the ideas there were to um, try and show the GeoJSONs in ID because there's a minimal GeoJSON support in ID as a start. Um, and, and, and then also start thinking of like setting more thresholds in terms of fetching new areas, making, making sure that the performance of the API um, is largely acceptable. Um, yeah, I'll start there. Um, I think I think you should if you're interested in have models and want to play around with this API and integration with task manager, um, I encourage everybody to take a look at the documentation. Um, and obviously you know, hit us up if you have questions or open tickets if you find something that's off. Great, thanks, Sajat. Um, questions um, to from anybody? Feel free to type into the chat or to unmute yourself and ask us um, whatever you're up to right now. So there's a first question from uh, Prisan Karan. Do you have a workflow in mind for providing feedback from users into models? Great question. Um, we do not, but that is also one of the future directions of the work. Um, we've, we've kind of like talked about this briefly, but there are no concrete ideas on the table. So if you have anything in mind, please let us know. I think so far some some conversations we had around that was also that a lot of the information potentially um, would end up in 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 OSM directly, and this data could be used to retrain in a certain way, as long as we know um, the pipeline it went through. So in case of the tasking manager, if you know that this task has been edited through information that came from um, from um, a model through the ML enabler, um, this could be used in the in the um, yeah, for for feed, for the feedback loop. And I think that um, yeah, this is something yeah, as the chat said, that they're like first ideas, but um, no concrete thoughts yet. 
So, so Jad, there's another question for you. Um, um, what about a plugin for Jotun? Ooh, yeah, um, I'm really not the Jotun expert, but um, so one, so so we've talked about this in the context of ID a lot. I could imagine that um, if we figure out a lot of like the conflation and some of those questions um, properly, um, the API could also eventually have a awesome XML export format. So we could hit the API to get the awesome XML of a particular binding off, and that would work very well with integrating with uh, with JOSM. Yeah, I think I'm, I want to add that um, also the purpose of the, the webinar right now or, or what we would like to achieve um, is to see more people relying on that and seeing the, the benefit of of like collaboration and then going through like this consistent API and make this better and improve it. So um, for now we are doing the implementation and tasking manager and this is like the first use case but this is really designed to, to to connect to any kind of application. And ID could be one, MapRoulette could be another one, Jossen for sure. So so it's really um, a call for, for, for people that have applications that are around um, this ecosystem um, to consider whether they want to integrate it and to, to come on board in this, um, on this open source software and, and do it together with us. More questions. I think in the meantime, I can quickly show you uh, quickly the, um, feel free to think about questions and to just ask them. Um, just wanted to show quickly here the wiki page that I mentioned earlier and the applications that are there. Now that we are like more talking about who could use it and what what is up to, um, what could it integrate? And I think that this gives like an, a little bit an idea. Um, I think this is not grouped of what the software is. So I'm just going through this quickly. Looking glasses. Um, as the chat was mentioned, the, the, the model, um, the open source model. Um, there's another one on the development seat um, to um, predict um, high voltage networks. Um, on um, the, within the missing maps um, project and also pushed by heart, um, we have been looking on um, using map swipe input for verification of, um, of, of machine learning and also um, 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 like directing people to the, to the right places. Then LA enabler we just talked about. Um, the OSM analytics is one of the tools that already does, um, uses, consumes ML data and does a maybe similar uh, gap analysis as we are talking about in the tasking manager, but more on a on a continent scale and not so much on a task scale. Um, Rapid is Facebook's version of a consuming application, in this case ID, that um, allows to, to map with geometries. And then there are others like Road Tracer or, or RoboSat that are not integrated. Those are models that, are, that could be perfectly integrated and we are um, we would be very excited if this is happening with those and others. Um, and further down, you see also like proprietary models that have been um, made, that, have, that have made their, their data available and, and like the um, building footprints from Microsoft that, that is integrated already in the ML enabler. So um, really, I think there are the, those two parts, right? There is, there are the models that can give and feed into ML, ML, ML enabler. And then on the other side, there are 
the applications and there really we can be very creative on on how those can then be used and um, this um, yeah as, as you were asking it can be chosen it can be not map that but this could be also quality assurance tools that could be um, yeah um, all kind of things that um, I think now it's the time to think about how we could implement them in a meaningful and also in a conscious way More questions here. Um, uh, the question about uh, overpass. Yes. Um, so you would be able to run the the aggregator again over that particular area to update the uh, to update the prediction from uh, update the existing data from from. Um, from overpass. Um, Ralph, I'm looking at your question and repeating it. There's mention of detailed statistics regarding speed of completion of projects, what ratio is validated, etc. Where can we access these statistics? Um, is it correct that you're asking about the um, tasking manager here? Um, if this is the case, um, we do have some statistics on those, but um, I, I'm not like they are. They are definitely available under the API endpoint, which I can type into the chat here. Um, I, um, that it's definitely um, something that um, yeah, we um, it's. Uh, we, are, we are we are currently implementing for for um, enhancing the tasking manager, so um, it's probably not as comfortable so like um, to be shown. But in a couple of months, we will have some good progress on that side. Um, we um, yeah, I, I don't think it's too much related to ML though. So um, if you if you want to specify your question more, um, that would be good. Uh, two new questions. So one is about uh, triggers and webhooks. Uh, yes, we did talk about it, but in this phase of the work, we haven't quite implemented. I think um, to do that, we have to first make some changes to the existing task manager annotations API, and that will likely happen next. Um, so running scripts on different imagery options. Yes, yeah, so the the imagery option is actually pretty flexible. Um, you can send the API URL uh, to, to the model, um, though models usually tend to make kind of decisions on what imagery that they would like to use um, because of a combination of quality and license reasons. Um, but yes, the, the command line utility and the, and, and the API doesn't enforce a particular imagery uh, provider. Cool. There was one question from Franz Schutz um, about, is it too early to show examples in JOSM? Um, Franz, yeah, um, currently it is too early because there's, there has no happened any integration. So um, this, they are like, the, the JOSM would need to, um, to have an, I would say, an, an, a plugin that, that, that consumes the ML enabler um, API. And JOSM would also have to define how they want to use this data.
Okay, we have five minutes left. So if you have some last questions, um, now it's the time to ask them. Okay, um, do we have something more? In the... How do you plan? Yeah, last question. How do you, how long do you plan on keeping the playground separate? Um, this is a good question. Um, there is, I think that, um, it's the idea here is probably to integrate, um, the things that turn out to, um, to fit in well. So why we, so there I think it must be clarified why we did the separate one is because we wanted to experiment and, um, and want to see what, what works out, um, in a, in a beneficial way for the matter. Um, and I think one of the, at least from, from what I'm seeing, one of the, um, points that might us keeping a little bit, um, waiting on that is that we still have only like very punctual, um, data available for certain regions um, and I guess that um, w once we want to integrate it so a lot of things are already going into the main instance but not the functionality why because we um, yeah because we we don't have necessarily the data and it's um, and it would probably confuse more um, people that are that are administrating the task manager so um, to answer your question, things should go in step by step. Some things are going in, um, and um, and data availability and and really allowing a functionality functionality to be mature and available for for a lot of places and um, is is crucial for us. So um, I cannot say when we really want to shut that down, but um, all the things that prove to be good um, and work for a, for a general audience um, come into the main instance that was there. Okay, um, I'm going to check the link again. I think that was actually okay, but I will send it back um, in a bit. So just to... Um, Make sure, um, yeah, to, to invite everybody to contact us, um, such as myself on the bottom. There's my, my email address. Um, there's the GitHub repository. Feel free to open up issues. Um, if you're interested in, in integrating, um, your model to your software, please write us. Um, we are more than happy to, to, to think through it with you together and to, to help where we can to make, um, the integration possible. Um, yeah, once again, um, invitation also to join the OSM mailing list for machine learning. And, um, I will send the link in to the, to the API docs, the corrected one in a minute. Um, ah, okay. It was about the last slash. Cool. Yeah. Um, there was a last minute change that we introduced because, um, yeah, it was before the slash and I'm still on the old version. Cool. Um, then thanks everybody. Um, as I said, feel free to reach out. Um, thanks to chat and, um, for, for all the collaboration and uh, the presentation here. And, um, I wish you a good end of the day, start of the day, depending where you are. If it's hot as it is in the Northern Hemisphere right now, um, 
and hope that you find some some cool spots and um, yeah thanks everybody bye thank you all bye